All right, um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as people trickle in, they can join us as well. Um, so, hello, my name is Alexis and um, I'm with the Plano Public Library. And this program is being presented in partnership with UNT. And we are pleased to have Juliana here with us today to present the Game of Life. Juliana Vargas is on the outreach team at the University of North Texas and is a peer mentor with the university's Student Money Management Center. Juliana is enthusiastic about sharing financial education and has some great information and perspectives to share with you today. So please join me in welcoming Juliana. Hello, everyone. Thank you again so, so much. It's an honor to work with you guys again. We had a blast at the first one. So again, welcome everyone. And this is a quick reminder. Um, go ahead and actually mute your microphones. And also, if you have any questions at all throughout the presentation, go ahead and send them in the chat. We'll answer them throughout the presentation. So you can wait till the end. Or you can um, ask them throughout the presentation as well. Now we'll get started. Awesome. So yes, again, this is the game of life. And so this is our little twist on it. So game of life, but money-wise and also applying it to now real life. So real life scenarios. And so the agenda in the overview for today, we're gonna actually do a little introduction of our center for the Sweet Money Management Center. We're also gonna be talking about just some rules before we get started for the game. Then we'll do like the game time. So when the worksheet, that's when it's gonna come in. We'll do a little recap after the game and also review. And then we're going to talk about money personalities as well. Those are super interesting. And then we'll have some closing statements just to do a little review again of what your um, estimates were and your expenses as well. All righty. Okay, so I actually work at the Money Management Center. I've been working here now for two years. I'm also a senior at UNT. And at the Money Management Center, we focus on these four main tiers. So we have coaching sessions. It's nothing athletic. Um, it sounds athletic because it's coaching, but not at all. It's actually where we work with students one-on-one. -on -one. And if students might have a question on FAFSA or on how to receive one of our loans from our emergency assistance program, and that's where we sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, or we can actually do it through Zoom or whatever they're comfortable with, get Google, Google Hangouts, and we converse with them for an hour, 45 minutes, um, just to get them a plan and get started with topics like budgeting, and loan counseling, Anything that you're interested in curious money-wise except taxes, we can definitely help you out with. And you can have a session with myself, a peer mentor, or also with a staff member. All of our peer mentors are trained um, and we have a financial education certification. So again, we know the money basics. We can definitely help you on that aspect. Um, as for our emergency assistance program, that's called the Eagle Emergency Assistance Program. And that's where we help students out if they're ever in a rut or anything like that. Money-wise, let's say, um, I'll use myself as an example. I needed money for tires. And again, didn't have that in my savings. So I was able to use a loan from our center. And it's a safe loan just because again, we don't charge credit or anything like that. And so we're able to help students in that way just to help them along with their educational journey. And again, just to prevent any more hardships, we do also do those coaching sessions alongside just to have a plan for next time. And then we have the outreach team, which I'm actually on this team. And this is where we focus on collaborations online, social media, marketing. We try to meet students where they are. Typically we do tabling. Again, now we're doing online tabling with Instagram Live. So again, if you have any more questions, definitely follow us on Instagram and all our social medias. And then again, our resources, we have them online available as the uh, loan application 24 seven online. We have YouTube videos as well. And that's it for our center and our resources. And it's also free for students, also alumni as well. Alrighty, so before we get started, let's talk about the money, let's get into it. So um, these are just some smart financial basic tips. Again, you might have heard of these already, like taxes, expenses, you've probably heard of these, but we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into them. So we're talking about like income, taxes, expenses, and then for expenses, there's a whole bunch of them. These are just some, so we have fixed, variable, periodic, discretionary, and then the last one, we'll actually create a budget with the information that we've learned. And again, feel free to take any notes on this stuff. We'll also go ahead and cover any more information that you might have. We can also send this presentation to you if you want to um, have another copy of it to review at home. And you can just email money.management at unc.edu. And I'll put the email in the chat too, and it's going to be at the end as well. But again, if you want to just review this on your own time or anything like that, 
um, feel free to just reach out to us. So for income, so income is going to be that money that's received, especially on a regular basis for work, also through investments. And then there's two types. There's gross income. So it's going to be the income before taxes. And then there's also the net income, and that's going to be the income that is received after taxes. So that's what you typically call like your take home pay. And already for taxes, also let me know if I'm going too fast, please feel free to let me know if I'm going too fast. It will definitely slow down. Won't be an issue. So for taxes, there's here we have three types. So again, this is something that I also learned. I didn't know that there was that much in-depth information into taxes. So there's federal taxes, and that's going to be your social security, your income, and also your Medicare. And then there's state taxes, which is in terms of disability, if that's applicable, unemployment, um, family, insurance, worker compensation, and all that is specifically if it's applicable to you in your situation as well. And then local taxes, that's going to be, um, again, income taxes if applicable as well. And moving on, the next one is called fixed expenses. And for fixed expenses, they can occur daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or annually. And then we have some pictures of here, so some examples. So some examples of your fixed expenses would be like your rent, car payments, childcare, cell phone, bill, et cetera. And again, these occur on a basis that are like weekly, daily, and bi-weekly. So think of it in that instance. The next one is called variable expenses. These variable expenses depend on your lifestyle. And some examples of these are food, utilities, transportation. And a tip that we have for variable expenses. So they're very distinct, of course, from the fixed expenses. So variable expenses, again, they just depend on your lifestyle. So again, if you're very frugal, if you're not, um, if you want to be, this is going to be very dependent on how you control your money. And a tip we have for this, for variable expenses, because again, they can really much range, really much depending on, again, your lifestyle, of course. So you, a tip we have is you can live in today's mindset or tomorrow's. So in terms of saving, always remember, again, especially what we say for students, maybe after college, um, you don't necessarily need that model or that year car. If you're looking into getting a car, definitely get and live within your means. The next one is periodic expenses. And so for periodic expenses, it's just like the name, they occur regularly, but not monthly. And some examples of these would be like cart maintenance and also textbooks. Again, so textbooks, for example, they would occur once you start a semester and once you start a class, but again, they're periodic. So again, not necessarily every single school year, but most likely most of them. And then right, this is the next one for discretionary expenses. So discretionary expenses are what most people consider their wants. And so examples of these would be as your travel, gifts, personal care, et cetera. So again, just like the variable ones, these can also really much range considering again, what your needs are, what your wants. And a tip we have again for this one um, is that it's very important to recognize your wants and to build in opportunities for fun and self-care. Again, as much as you save, as much as you're um, proud of yourself for being frugal or living within your means, you definitely want to always treat yourself as well. And that's something that we do really, really um, preach here at the Money Management Center. So as much as you do save, also remember to treat yourself. All right, so this is going to be for creating a budget. And so, okay, so now that we have the base information for all the components of the budget, so now that we kind of run over like the income, the expenses and stuff like that, we're actually gonna be able to build the budget. So if you guys would like, you can actually take a screenshot of this, feel free. This is just an example of how to create a budget. Again, this is just what we recommend if you're just starting off with maybe money management or learning the basics of finances. There's definitely many other ways to go ahead and create your budget. Some students use an Excel sheet. We actually have an Excel sheet at our office. So if you are a little bit more advanced or wanna get more advanced, we can definitely send you that. It's called our Money Pro Sheet. And it's called Money Pro Sheet because we want students to actually plan, record and observe their money and how, again, it's transferring in and out of their accounts. 
but um, that's again, if you would like something a little bit more advanced, but this is what we definitely recommend for a basic budget. The first one would be to go ahead and add all your monthly income together. The second thing would be to subtract the taxes from the gross income to get the monthly net income. And then the third one would be to actually add all other monthly expenses together. And last, to go ahead and subtract total expenses from your net income. And again, you have a little formula down there. So income minus expenses, and then that would equal your positions. And already, I hope everyone has their worksheet. We're gonna get started with the game time. And let me just go ahead and kind of do a mini little brief of the game. So there's some um, important categories of the game of life that we're gonna be doing. So a little twist on it. So again, it's gonna be like lifestyle choices. So that's gonna be like the cards and the title of the card. So we're gonna have these specific kinds of cards. We're gonna have um, career cards, housing, food, utilities, entertainment, pets, and transportation. And you'll get to choose, um, again, specifically what of those three options that you want for, of course, like your food, utilities, entertainment, and a pet. But again, you won't see the price until the next slide. So choose wisely and we'll see if you survive. And the second thing is that um, remember that there are important expenses to consider, such as debt, student loans, savings. And again, just to give a little preface, um, all of you on your worksheet um, one of the pages has salaries. Those are all mid-ranges, guys. So again, that would be um, a student or a young adult, actually, who is maybe five, 10 years in industry. So after they graduate, and maybe they still have student loans. So keep that in mind that you might be having some good debt accumulated if you bought a house or depending on the card you choose, of course, and the savings that you have. And again, um, we definitely just listed the mid-ranges. Um, there, of course, are different ranges for if you're a junior, mid, and senior level. So please, please, please do your in-depth education into that. Um, of course, there's always things changing. I know for psychology, this is random, but for some psychology uh, master's programs, they're combining it with PhD one. So instead of just going from your bachelor's to master's to PhD, now you can go from your bachelor's to PhD. So do your research because things are always, always changing, of course especially on the education and salary, and also cost of living too. Cost of living can also definitely vary. So let's get started. Okay, so again, we have on this slide careers. So please feel free to go ahead and take a screenshot of this slide. This is also in your worksheet. So again, we'll take a, a few seconds to go ahead and let you guys read through these too, and go ahead and choose your career. Also, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to ask. Feel free to ask, guys. And I know on your worksheet, it would say a little bit more in depth about the education. Here, we just have listed so it won't be too crowded. Um, just the title of the career and also the salary. So this is, this is a mid-range too. Also consider that, guys. So this would not be once you graduate. This would be once you're working a little bit in industry. And then we have one more slide that has the career option. So, Look at these, maybe um, have two to three in mind, and then we'll go to the next one, and then you can like finalize your choice. That's what I would recommend. And again, we have editor, we have travel agents, we have a registered nurse, we have a multimedia artist slash animator. So we do have a wide variety of them, I'd say. Of course, we don't have them all because that would be pages and pages and pages, of course. But again, um, please check on your worksheet to see um, the education level required, just so you have a better um, kind of mindset of maybe how many scholarships you have to get, or maybe um, how much debt you'll be in, or how much long, how long you'll be in school for. And if we are good to go, I'm going to go to the next slide. But again, I can go back to any slide if needed. Okay, so this one is again some more careers. And please, please refer to the handout for more in-depth info on the education. So here we have chef, high school teacher, pharmacist, graphic designer, just as some. And of course, um, 
all of this would definitely range if you're going to be on different coasts, out of state, out of the United States. So definitely, definitely, definitely look into that and go more in depth. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide, if that's okay with everyone. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so this is the first choice for housing. So this is our cards we have, guys. So you can only choose one of these. So for housing, these are just all the options for housing. And then in the next slide, um, we're going to have the price points. So um, go ahead, I'll give you some, a few seconds to go ahead and choose. If you wanted to go ahead and for the first card choice is house, apartment, living at home with parents. And also keep in consideration that um, you are going to be graduated or maybe in industry at least five to ten years so you'll have your salary mid-range so keep that all in mind and again the options are house apartment and then living at home with parents and then meanwhile we guys choose and wait um a question we have just again just to keep this entertaining um how many ants do you need to rent out an apartment Okay, next slide. Alrighty, so go ahead on your worksheet and um, fill out the price point for housing. So whichever one you chose, don't change it for the game of life. The price point, so again, this would be like for renting a house. Um, that'd be $1,200 for the house option. And then for the apartment option, um, it's going to be $880. And then for living at home, we'll just put $50. Um, again, it could maybe be zero if your parents are kind enough. Um, but we just put 50, just again, just, just to make sure maybe you're chipping in. Because of course you would have a salary that's coming in, so you'd be making some income. And so this is the options for housing. So I'll give you like a few seconds just to go ahead and write down everything. And so right now we're just gonna be filling out the worksheet. And little by little, everything will be filled out, and then we'll be able to do the net income and stuff like that. Give you a few more seconds. And again, thank you all for joining again on Monday. You guys are awesome for joining in. The next option is food. And so for food, again, you're going to be like a young adult. So you have grocery shopping. Might be a smart option. You have also meal plan. So for meal plan, that one's kind of confusing. So I'll just go ahead and explain it. So um, I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of a system, but typically for meal plans, you can actually use an outside service like HelloFresh and they'll send um, kind of free to prepare or actually like boxes of like already pre-made food for your entire week. And it really helps a lot of people. I know my brother has used it to stay healthy and to make sure he's having a balanced diet, but also again, living within his means economically and the last option is eating out and then for this question for this slide just again to keep it entertaining what does the baby corn say to the mama corn so that'll be on the next slide and again thank you all for joining so much and everyone at the plano public library for helping out to create this and make this possible you guys are awesome and again your game of life cards are grocery shopping meal plan and eating out I remember the meal plan one is um, where you would receive food pre-made to you. So think of it as like lunch boxes, but sent to your house pre-made and you can choose what the meal is too. Okay, so next slide. Alrighty, so if you chose grocery shopping, that's gonna be $208, so write that in. And if you chose meal plans, it's gonna be $330. So write that in two. And then if you chose eating out, it's gonna be 460. And again, when we were determining these numbers at the center, we were also thinking about the cost of not just, of course, having a card for the food, but again, of going out, the transportation, the drinks involved as well, the beverages. Um, so please, please keep that all in mind. Um, you might just think you're spending $5 maybe on coffee, but again, you might be spending money also on gas and all of that accumulates. So 
put that all into perspective too. Oh, and then the answer to the question, to the last slide, so what did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's the problem? So we just found these really funny. I personally find them hilarious. So hope you guys are enjoying them. And again, I'll give you some um, time to as well write down the numericals for your worksheet. And again, please ask any questions if, again, they may occur or come up. And grocery shopping is 208. Meal plans, 330. And eating out was 460. Oh, in addition, I also almost forgot. Um, these numbers are also calculated in like a monthly kind of mindset and context. So again, the context of this game is that you are a young adult. Your salary is like a mid-range. You're five, 10 years in industry. Maybe you graduated after college and you might have some debt or maybe you have some savings. Um, and yes, these numbers are kind of in the context of a monthly basis. So monthly grocery shopping, monthly eating out. Those are got those numbers. And if everyone's good to go, we're gonna go ahead and go on the next slide. Utilities, who doesn't like these? Utilities, part of adulting, very important. So yes, on top of what you're already paying um, for your rent, you're also gonna be having to pay utilities to, of course, maintain your environment, maintain your home. Um, so again, if you chose um, house, you have to, um, or you chose for housing, continue with the same one. So of course, um, if you chose house, then you would just go with the price point for house. Same thing with apartment, you would just continue on with the price point of apartment. And then if you chose living with parents, then you have to go ahead and, of course, go ahead and choose the same price point of living home with parents. And again, since everyone already kind of already has this answer written down, it's just writing down the numerical to the next slide. We'll actually go and skip ahead to the question. Well, it's a little joke, actually. So I finally managed to get rid of that nasty electrical charge I've been carrying. And next slide. I think I'm ecstatic. So I personally find this really, really funny. I hope you guys do too. So again, for these Game of Life cards, um, if you chose house in the previous housing round, um, go ahead and write 95 for utilities. And that's kind of keeping into consideration like if anything goes wrong, housewives, any leaks, or again, having to also continuously pay for if you're not doing already yourself, maybe some gardening, lawn mowing and stuff like that. It can definitely all accumulate when you're having a house. Next one is apartments. If you chose apartment for the housing round, continue on with the apartment one and write 55. And again, that's considering basic things as trash. Um, I know some of my friends here in Denton, they have a little bill that comes in also for them to, to pick the trash to be picked up. And again, living at home with parents, it's gonna be $15. Or again, if your parents are kind enough, it could be zero, but for this game of life, we're gonna be 15, it's gonna be $15. And I'll give a few more seconds to be everyone to go ahead and write everything down. And I hope you guys all enjoyed the little joke on the ecstatic. <laughs> and alrighty, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. So entertainment, one of my favorite ones. Okay, so these categories for these cards are gonna be park, concert, and movie. you guys go ahead and choose which one you would like. And the options are park, concert, and movie. And we'll go ahead and move on. And for entertainment, we have park, concert, and movie. And so if you chose park, go ahead and go ahead and um, it's free actually. So there's a whole bunch of free public parks. So 
did a good job if you chose that one. For concert, it's actually gonna be 100. And then for a movie, we're gonna, we put 35, because of course, if you go to the movies, I don't know about you guys, but if I personally want snacks, I want a drink, I want to definitely enjoy the movie. And then for concert, sometimes they're like around what I've seen, some tickets are 60. But then again, keeping in mind, you might want something to drink, or again, you might want to get one of the little lawn chairs, um, or even a t-shirt from the artist. So definitely, definitely, definitely um, keep that all in mind, that things can always add up. And let you guys go ahead and write down this on your worksheet in a miracle. And then if anyone would like to answer this question in the chat, just for fun, um, there's no wrong answer, of course. Um, the typical lifespan of a dollar bill is just blank months, or you can do years. It's up to you. Yeah, we'll do years. So you guys want to guess in the chat what's the typical lifespan of a dollar bill in years? So of a dollar bill. Let's see what the chat says. Awesome. Thank you for sending it in. One month. Oh, also, thank you for sending our email. Thank you so much. One point, 0 0.1 months. So for a dollar bill, the average, I'll go ahead and just tell you guys, um, the lifespan of a dollar bill is actually 6.6 .6 years. So it's years, guys. Surprisingly, I thought it was also just one month too. Good guesses, everyone. Good guesses. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. And then for this slide, again, just go ahead and do a little joke for this one. So what do you call security guards working outside of Samsung shops? Guardians of the Galaxy. Got this from the internet, so I definitely recommend looking up some jokes. These are still super, super, super funny. And for pets, the cards are dog, cat, snake, and no pet. So again, it's up to you, of course, if, if you're allergic, I'm personally allergic to cats. Um, so I wouldn't choose that one, wish I wasn't. But again, no wrong answer or anything. Again, remember to live within your means. So I'll let you guys go ahead and choose which one you would like. And then the question for this one is, again, just to continue it, what do you call a dog that licks an electrical socket? And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. Sparky. And again, go ahead for a dog. If you chose that card, it's gonna be 60. If you chose cat, it's gonna be 45. And then snake, 20. And of course, if you chose no pet, zero. So that's that for these options. And again, um, of course, you can, these can definitely range depending on what kind of dog you have, what kind of size. I personally have a very large dog, so my dog's a bit more pricey. But again, it can honestly range on, of course, the breed and all that stuff. And so for a dog, just one more time, it's going to be $60 for cat, 45 for snake, 20 and then for no pet, zero. And that's that for the pet category. And for transportation, um, we're going to have these three options of Uber slash car. Second one is public transportation. And the last one is bike. And again, this could definitely also vary depending on your location, where you're at, if you're in New York City, California, and Dallas. It can definitely all range if you can bike to work. But again, keep that all in mind. Even if you're going into college, again, of what you're going to be um, needing to budget for. Just for example, if you do bring your car to college, you will need to um, most likely need a parking pass. Um, if you're gonna be living on campus and stuff like that, and those can definitely all add up, depending if you want a parking garage or not. So 
keep that in mind. It wouldn't just be um having to maintain money for your gas and budget for gas money. It would also be also having to budget in for a yearly um, parking cost too. So keep that into consideration. And then public transportation, a lot of it's free at universities because it's already included with your tuition. But again, if you are going to be out in industry, it's probably not going to be free. So a bus pass, we'll do how much that might be per month. And then, of course, bike. I would also budget in how much maybe for any repairs and fixes like that. And keep that all in mind, too. And then for the little comical joke that we have going on, it's my friend always went the extra mile at work. We're going to go to the next slide now. And I'll just do the joke first. Um, that's why he lost his job as a bus driver. If you chose Uber slash car, it's going to be 300. And again, this could also definitely vary too if you're going to have, if you're paying insurance as well for your car, you need maintenance to gas, all that stuff. Um, alongside with also public transportation, we got 40 for that. And again, this is going to be on a monthly basis. And lastly, we have bike, which is free. And of course, this can also definitely range of what kind of car you have, what kind of public transportation you're choosing. Even with bikes, of course, too, what kind of bike you have. But we just did free for bikes. And again, we're going to just assume you don't need that many repairs. So we'll see. And I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and write that down. And alrighty, we're going to go ahead and move on. And so that was it for our card categories, guys. But now it's going to be time for you to, on the worksheet, follow the instructions on the left side. So it's going to be like a one, two, three, four of what to do and how to add all the numbers to get your net income. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a few minutes to go ahead and fill that out. Um, I suggest, maybe you don't need it, maybe you do, no worries, no judgment if you do, a calculator. Um, again, take your time, add up the numbers, and make sure you're following the steps on the worksheet to on the left side. So if you have any questions, the left side of the worksheet should answer them with how to exactly go about getting your net income, just to see if you succeeded. And then we're going to go ahead and um, talk about what your final balance was. So we'll, we'll do these questions in a second. So no rush. But let us know too, whenever you guys are done. So if anyone on the chat wants to go ahead and whenever you're done, just send in what you made at the end. Yes, I can go back. No worries. Thank you so much. Oh. Right here. So this is actually the first slide of the career choices. So I saw your um, comment in the chat. Thank you so much for sending that in about um, different career choices. So going back to the slide, this is the career choices that we have for, again, just the first category. There's some more on the next, but I'll give you guys a few seconds for this slide. Someone just wanted to verify that the salaries are yearly, not monthly, right? Yes, correct, correct. Great question, great question. And I'll leave this here a little bit longer. Okay, we'll go to the next slide right now. These are the other careers options. And again, let us know if you have any more questions at all. But again, take your time, go ahead and complete your math for how much you had at the end and send in those numbers in the chat. We would love to see how much you guys made at the end and what you guys had as a result. So we can just go ahead and discuss.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the questions. Perfect. Sorry for getting anyone dizzy. How is everyone doing? Does anyone have any questions? Let's see, let's see. Don't be shy, go ahead and send in those final balances in the chat whenever you can. If you can do the math mentally, kudos to you, good job. If you need a calculator, no worries, no judgment. And feel free to also, um, when we do this review section, if you guys would like um, to turn your mics on, you can do a little discussion, two of these. But the main question is to see, did you survive? Awesome, thank you so much for sending that in. And then for the chance, well, I would just skip that for now. But good question. And awesome, your final balance after total expenses is 5,977. Thank you for sending that in. And again, if anyone has any more um, and they would like to send it in, there are no wrong answers, of course. It's just a preference game and just to see, again, how everyone would be and how, again, things to consider for reality of life. You made $3,153.25. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you for sending that in. But yes, yeah, I would divide it by 12, correct, yes. And I'll give you guys a few more seconds to go ahead and finalize the numbers, but thank you for sending me your questions. Great, great questions, guys, great questions. Awesome, oh, you chose the highest paying job. Oh, okay, that was a good strategy. Thank you, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we got some people that had 6,000, almost 7,000. We had some people who made 3,000 and some people who made 5,000. Okay, so some balances are kind of arranged for the next question it is. And again, feel free to keep sending it if you're still doing the math, um, send it in whenever you can. Just so we can go ahead and just discuss. Again, there's no wrong answers. The second question is, what was your career choice? Again, if anyone wants to send in their career choice, you also said you had the highest paying job. Um, I'm kind of curious, Colin, what was, what was the highest paying job listed on there? If you want to send that in the chat if you're comfortable or um, turn on your mic. Um, but what do you guys choose as your careers? Because lawyer, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Registered nurse, cool, awesome. Thank you guys for sending them in. Oh, there's advertising, okay, okay. Promotions marketing manager. High school teacher, thank you. Thank you so much for sending those in. Awesome. You guys are so much fun, so much fun. Thank you guys all for coming again too. And then as we wrap up, what were your lifestyle choices? So if anyone wants to send in, um, if what else did you choose? What did you choose no pets? Did you choose pets? What was your strategy around that? So if anyone wants to just type in the chat. You chose a cat. Oh, I would have chosen a cat, but I'm allergic. I'm allergic. 
because cats are awesome awesome you choose no pets no pets well i wish it was like you guys i do agree cats are awesome <laughs> but no pets is also okay no worries there is no wrong answer we had a request about uh, defining net income again yes let me go actually back to that slide i do recommend um whenever you guys have the chance to go ahead and if you want to just do some notes um on terminology or take screenshots screenshots are awesome but there's two types so there's gross income and there's also the net income so sorry again if i'm making anyone dizzy too so net income that's going to be your income that's received after taxes so again that's what you're going to be calling your take-home pay And again, feel free to take a screenshot of the slide and that's all going to be encompassing of your income. So how much is coming in? And so again, just to say that one more time, so net income is going to be the income that's received after taxes and your take home pay. And which is distinct from and can become like confused from your gross income because that's actually before. So again, think of it in the sense if you get ever confused G comes before N. So again, gross comes first and then net income comes after. Just if you ever get confused alphabet wise, that's what helps me. And again, great question. Thank you so, so much for asking that because I'm sure maybe someone else was also confused. So great job, great job for asking that question. Let's go back to that slide. Just one second. Okay. So again, so it seems like everyone survived. So you guys did a great job of choosing a strategy. So I'm really proud of everyone. Awesome, awesome. No one I hope was in the negatives. Hope not. And again, if you were, no worries. Just make some choices for next time to again reevaluate just so you're on the negatives or how to prevent that. Oh. Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite parts. It's talking about. Um, what is your spending personality? Again, feel free to take a screenshot of this slide too. Um, I personally, I didn't know all about these until we did our financial certification. So for our FinCert exam. And for the exam, they talk about just different kinds of um, spending personalities. And there's a whole bunch, but these are the ones that they listed. And some of them can change. Um, some different websites have different names and stuff like that. These are just the names that they utilize. Um, so you have um, impulse spenders. And again, what I would say is to think about people, think about yourself to people in your family who are these kinds of spenders. Um, and then again, from what they are, reevaluate what they are, just you can make, again, changes and iterations to your certain kind of spending habits if they are negative. Um, so impulse spenders, so those are individuals who buy items without planning their purchase and often buy things they don't need. So again, it can be very, very easy to be an impulse spender, but again, always remember to live within your means and to not necessarily always um, buy things that you don't need. Think about the future and the longevity of the things and how long they'll last and if they just bring you happiness in that one moment or for a long time. And then there are um, therapeutic spenders, and those are going to be spenders who are in direct contrast to avoidance spenders. So avoidance spenders are coming up soon, and so these individuals shop to cure what troubles them. So let's say maybe you're sad and you're down and you want some ice cream um, and you just get that ice cream in that moment just to satisfy that feeling. Think about it in the long run, think about not spoiling your dinner in that sense. So again, it might not be the best to be a um, therapeutic spender. The third one is called a utilitarian spender. And those are gonna be spenders who shop to fulfill their needs, not their wants. So again, needs in the sense of these are people who shop to, again, maybe they just buy one shirt once a year because they know they just need one shirt. They already have a lot of other different shirts that they haven't worn or that they're okay with and they're just comfortable with. Again, it's great to be a utilitarian spender just because you are in control of your money. But again, always remember what you said earlier to always as well treat yourself as much as you are spending. Make sure that you are again treating yourself and rewarding yourself with like freaking vacation or something that brings you joy too. A frantical spender. So this is the fourth one. These are individuals who are so busy looking for bargains that they might not realize all the time and energy that they've spent that outweighs the bargain itself. 
So what that basically could be is someone who maybe is a negative extreme couponer in the sense of maybe they spend hours, days, months, weeks on getting and cutting and finding that exact coupon. Uh, think of it in the long term. Maybe they weren't able to spend family time or time with their pets because they were trying to get that certain discount deal. And think about maybe the time it took and how much it might outweigh other experiences because again, time is not ever returned. And again, moving on, recreational spenders. And so these are individuals who shop to kill time. So maybe they're just bored and they just want to go to the store. And um, this can also be very, very, very dangerous because you might end up just getting things that you don't need to. Um, but again, there's always things that you can do to, um, instead of going to shop somewhere, if you know you're going to be very, very likely to get something and want to spend money, there's always a situation that you can be put in and control to not do that. So I would say you could go to the park or go to the library somewhere that you know you won't be spending too much money in if you are a recreational spender. Um, and then the, one of the um, next ones is avoidance spenders. So we actually just mentioned that one in therapeutic spenders. So therapeutic spenders is to recap or direct contrast to this. So these are individuals who shop to avoid and escape dealing with the stresses of daily life. So this could be someone who is maybe they're having so much homework, they're really, 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 really stressed with dealing with maybe school, work, or maybe they're also like doing parenting, all that stuff. Um, and they, again, to avoid maybe their need necessary tasks, um, they go shopping. So this can also be very, very dangerous because you can um, end up with a whole bunch of stuff and accumulating the clothes and things that you don't really need instead of dealing what you need to deal with. And then second to last we have is steam spenders. And so these people are, they buy items without planning and buy things that they don't need too. So very, 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 again, dangerous to get into some territory. But again, it's just good to know what your personality is. Just if you wanted to, you can make corrections to it. And then um, the last one is passive spenders. There's a whole bunch, if you guys can tell. Um, passive spenders, um, these individuals don't like to shop and they usually buy items without comparing prices or asking questions. Um, again, this one might not sound as dangerous as some of the other ones to get into, but they kind of really are. If you think about it, if you don't really um, have a price point of something in your head of how much it might be, then you can actually maybe end up getting scammed or even just wasting money when um, you know you could get it somewhere else cheaper. For example, let's say that you bought um, some kind of hand soap and you bought it and you would just buy it for $30 just because it was uh, maybe handmade or all these other things really organic and the packaging was super nice but again we all know hand soap shouldn't be really more if it's a, if it's a reasonable size like five dollars but again keep it all in mind of course and again um, if you wanted more examples go on the website down below on that little link but with that being said we're going to go on to the next slide And this is actually the end of the presentation, guys. So again, thank you so much for doing the worksheets, for taking the time to do this activity with us. Shout out to also our amazing partners at the Plano Public Library for again collaborating with us not just once but two times on this. Together, super super awesome. We had so much fun the first time, and so much fun again this time as well. Love being able to interact with everyone in the chat. So thank you so much again for sending in all your comments and questions in the chat. It's super awesome. I feel like I'm actually presenting in person. But again, if you want to contact us for the presentation, the our email is in the chat too. But our email, I'll just go ahead and say it too right now. It's money.management at unc.edu. And our phone number, if you wanted to call us or again, get any kind of information. If you guys are looking into going into college, we can give you some background for taxes, of course, um, um, just some basics of what FAFSA is as well, if you're interested. You don't have to be necessarily a UNT student to get and um, receive our resources. Um, again, our resources are completely free as well. But yeah, if you're inquiring questions, we're definitely the office for you. Um, and then our address is, if you want to come in person too, it's Chestnut Hall 313, and we're located in Denton. And again, um, if you ever wanted to hear my lovely voice even more, I do run a podcast with one of our hosts, um, one of our peer mentors. She's a current host right now, Jasmine Davis. Super, super awesome. She's also on the outreach team. We also have our Facebook. We have our YouTube, which we always post videos on. And then um, we're very, also very active on our Twitter and our Instagram too. And again, huge, huge shout out. I'll go ahead and let 
our partners talk for the Puerto Public Library. But again, thank you from us, from the Tudemoni Menon Center for attending. We really, really appreciate everyone's time. All right, thank you so much. Um, so like she said, uh, we have a few resources available um, through the Plano Public Library as well. And you're able to access those from our website at planolibrary.org and our blog at planolibrarylearns.org. And I'm gonna put um, our Money Smart link. Sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thank you for attending our virtual program. And like Juliana mentioned earlier, we have um, resources available at the Plano Public Library. And you're able to access those on our website at planolibrary.org and our blog at planolibrarylearns.org. And I'm also going to place um, a link to our Money Smart uh, resources in the chat that you can access um, from, from home as well as a list of our um, virtual program schedule that we have in terms of small business workshops and just financial resources. Thank you. And also there's just one more question in the chat for um, at the bottom of the worksheet it says, how do I get the net income? Just um, the monthly salary, but times 75. So yes, that is correct. So yes, you would just multiply that by 75 and you're all good to go. But again, thank you guys so, so much for your time and everyone else. I hope to see you soon in our office or go ahead and schedule an interview with us for a coaching session. We'd be happy to have you guys. But again, everyone take care, take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.